Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm Coleman Hodges, and joining us today, Olympic champion, world champion, James Guy. Where, James, are you in Millfield today? You coming to us from uh, Millfield? Yeah, so I'm actually back home, but I did train this morning at Millfield. Um, it, was an, it was an anaerobic session this morning, so a lot of back-end speed stuff uh, for the 100 fly. Um, but it was quite nice. We trained this morning 9 to 11, and then we did gym after, so I was home for... 12 o'clock so that's quite nice and then rest the day off so yeah and obviously it's valentine's day today so yeah gonna chill tonight get a pizza and that but yeah it was uh the call was is from millfield now yeah not bath yeah uh okay so you're sorry is home still bath so i still live in bath um we just didn't see the point in moving for one year um because you know i'm on the outskirts of bath anyway and for me, I can go down in the mornings, train eight till ten, stay at a friend's place, and then we train again two till four. So it's quite tight in the day. I'm not re- waiting around for hours and hours. And then I'm home by five o'clock, and I only do two doubles a week, and that's Monday and Tuesday. So the rest of the time, Wednesdays a single in the morning, Thursdays the afternoon, Fridays the afternoon, Saturday morning. So yeah, that's it. Wasn't really worth the move. That makes sense. It just doesn't. It, it's too much to just do that for a year. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's good. Yeah. I, congrats. I first, the first thing I want to talk to you about is, uh, your, your December, your short course European championship, Oh yeah. which I like, I was like, all right, James guy, what meets has he done in the last few months as I was preparing for this? And I was like, oh my God, that's right. Yeah. You, European you, short course, which you got a great meet at, uh, you got on the podium yeah. and the tuner free. Yeah, the old, the yeah, the veterans coming back, baby. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Tell me about that meet. So it's my first meet with. So I, I previously raced w- with. So I, I think I'm going to start that at the beginning. So I joined Millfield, um, probably mid September, but like I kept missing stuff. So like I, I didn't start properly training till the first week of October. I went to the Ryder Cup um, in, in Italy was invited with uh, got tickets through my one of the players which is just amazing one of the best weekends i've ever had um but i will say though that the american kit the team kit is better than the european so <laughs> i managed to buy all the american kit so for the golf course um, and then after that i did a, a, a big charity walk um so i basically had like seven weeks of work with ryan at millfield and um, we were kind of quite densely loaded very very quickly um wasn't really a bill just straight into it um i raced at millfield or one of the short course meets um i think start of november i think i was 143.9 and 51.0 short course and they were quite tight back-to-back races for some reason the two fry two three one fly were the same day so I was like, i'm in a good place clearly i don't like short course swimming i've never liked it and this is something that rhymes that we have to do it so we kind of really focused on being processed at the meet about what to do on the turns, off the wall, really specific race plan. And that's what I was focusing on over and over again. And then that kind of kind of continued on into a, like a two week rest into a European short course. Um, and I knew that I was going to swim fast, like the way I was training. Um, I'd never cracked 142 before, never done it before. So to go and even the first day, 50.2, uh on the 100 fly for me that's really really good i know that my short course and long course times on fly are very very similar especially the 100 um long course 50.6 so i was like i knew that i'm in good shape so pb the first morning and then uh obviously the tuna free was the last day and i knew that i was going to swim well like i just knew the confidence was there and obviously it was 141.3 in the morning and I was like, that's the easiest thing I've ever done, ever done in my life. And it was just like, it, it it was just like, it was a swim that I think was always going to come out with the work I was doing. Um, and yeah, it was nice to get on the, obviously make it back because if, for us Brits, it was really weird because obviously only the top two can go through from each nation. We had four entries. So you ended up leathering the heat to try and make it back. And I knew it like in my heat, there was me, Matt Richards and Papa Vici and I knew at like 125, I think I was leading 150. I thought I've done it. I've I've definitely made it back here. Um, I think Dino was 142, 
I know he was a bit ill. Uh, Jack was 142, but I'm like, I'm definitely going to go 141. Um, and it's just like, you know, it's nice to know, like, most of us swimmers, I tell this to Adam, like, when we when we swim fast, we're happy. A happy swimmer is a fast swimmer. Hitting a personal best time makes me feel happy in myself. And it was the first time in a while where I come away from a meet actually really pleased with myself. Of, I've hit a PB. I've just turned 28. And Ben Prow went 20.1 or whatever he was. He's 29, so... This old age malarkey is a load of crock. Um, <laughs> so to do that, it just shows that the confidence is there. Clearly, I'm responding really well to the work at Millfield, and I'm happier. Um, so yeah, it was a nice start to the pr- nice start to the move from Millfield, and hopefully, you can carry on into trials in a well about six, seven weeks time. Yeah, and then uh, coming off of that meet, did you have a did you have a big a significant night personally after that? I just saw your Instagram posts. Uh, uh, I don't know actually. We went for a I know we went for a pizza. Um what did we do? We went for a pizza, a few beers, and just chilled out and but the pizza was massive. Um I know I had the Sunday off, but I came and trained. So I had the two free foul on a Saturday evening. I trained Sunday morning. Um because I just I was just wired. I was mentally just wide awake. Uh brain was working. I was like, I'll just come in and train and just kind of right, it's done now. Kind of crack on and just kind of run, give me four or five K. And it's just straight back into it, really. But, yeah, we kind of had a few beers, uh, a few pizzas. Uh, it was my engagement party the week after. So that's, that's what I'm party. talking about. Okay. Yeah, that was my <laughs> engagement party. So that was the celebrations after that, um, which was really, really nice to have, to have everyone there from swimming from years ago. Obviously, the, some of the, the Olympic team were there. Um, Duncan Scott, Pete, he's my best man. Uh, Tom Dean, Ben Proud. Um, yeah, Cam Curl, Rio Olympian. Um, so... It was really nice to have that party and uh, kind of that was the, what that's what the party was. <laughs> um, that's that's super cool. Uh, obviously, well timed, but yeah, to come off yeah, and meet very like well that, timed, <laughs> and then and then, yeah. and then to celebrate, you know, celebrate a professional achievement yeah. and a personal one as well. Yeah, it was just it was. I remember getting on the plane back home from Europeans, and even though it's not the biggest meet in the world, but. I really use that. And I know I think I think Duncan did as well as a confidence booster and Benny P as well. Of like what we're doing is clearly working and you can take away a lot from that meet of what you did going into it, how you felt and um, obviously the taper into it as well. So clearly it's it's definitely worked what I was doing. And yeah, it just kind of makes me happier wanting to go back to the pool. I want to work get, and get back into it straight away and just listen to what Ryan's giving me in my session. So yeah, it, it was a, a really nice time to come back and just be happier. Absolutely. What uh, what what do you feel like is going well for you in training right now in terms of the work you're doing and the kind of work you're doing? Um, so I've always kind of been, as a swimmer, like very, very aerobically good. Um, we do a lot. I do a lot more threshold work, example, 3100s, um, key session, um i did i did it at altitude actually um and i didn't go above high at 172 and it was long course and i was going 59s the whole way so i'm like if i can do that then i'm clearly in a good place like that's what i used to do when i was younger that's what i respond well to and like matt richards obviously we train together he won't do that he'll do something different so it's very individualized to what the athlete responds well to in training and yeah i thought so I've been doing a lot more aerobic, aerobic, base, aerobic based freestyle. Um, and it's just kind of, when I was at my fastest, I always trained for the 400. So it's like, it's very simple, go back to doing what you used to do. Um, and I feel like I kind of lost that way a little bit towards the end of leaving Bath. And I was very focusing on much on, much on the faster stuff. So the VO2, the high end gears where, you know, it's really, really hard. It's high risk, high reward. And it was really hurting me, like putting me in the bin. And I remember before the the Fukuoka World Championships, we were in Reims and I really couldn't swim. We were doing 10 300s aerobic. And it was that at the end of an anaerobic block. And I was like, I was miles behind everybody else. And I was like, they were like, what's wrong with Jimmy? I was like, I can't swim, mate. <laughs> and that's just not like me at all. I've never been exposed to that kind of work before. And you know, people respond really well to it. And for me, I just think as I'm getting a little bit older, you know, it's got to be so specific to me that what I need to do to get better is that's just not going to help me long term. It's not. So, mm. um, yeah, it's definitely a lot more at Millfield, uh, aerobic based freestyle swimming, low end stuff. Um, and obviously it, we kind of look at it as K2 
kind of keeping the meterage quite high up during the week. Um, but yeah, so just listen to what Ryan really has to say. I don't really, get, I don't really get a plan, but I trust in what he's doing. Obviously, Ewan's there. He's the director of Millfield Swimming, so he's my, he's my first original coach when I was at Millfield. And we had him this morning because obviously Ryan's with Matt at the World Championships and Ewan was timing us. So it's nice to have him back on poolside, you know, talking to me like a big brother, like a, you know, like a big brother basically is. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely just kind of in a better place at the minute. And um, I feel like when you, especially Olympic year, you want to leave no stone unturned. So going to the pool, you do everything right. You're technically on it, even when you're swimming slow. You know, there's no sloppy technique. Um, and if I do do that, Ryan will shout at me anyway. So there's, there's a, a thing for no shit backstroke when we swim slow <laughs> because my backstroke's terrible. Um, <laughs> that's a thing that he says quite a lot. But yeah, I'm just I'm enjoying the environment at the minute and it seems to be working quite well. Yeah. Are there specific kinds of sets that you and Matt will do together? Uh, yeah, we do something called like a, a intensive and extensive session. So it would be like we did this at altitude and it was... And before, so our pool was closed at Millfield, the long course pool, the plant room was flooded. And we did, like, basically, you're trying to go, it was 12 on 50s, um, one fast, three aerobic, um, three times. Um, And the fast one's like, you have a target time to hit. So it'd be short course meters, so it'd be like 122. Mm -hmm. And we did it together. And obviously, like, we never trained together. So when we do, we get carried away a little bit. So it turns to, like, 121. 119 118 and it's just like okay are we going to keep pushing this or not um and then it was after that that we did i think 16 100s and it was one fast three aerobic so the aerobics like probably 105 104 short course meters and mm. the, the fast one is supposed to be a target time of 54 short course that's what i would usually hold but because it was one offs you can kind of put the gas in a little bit and it turned into something silly um this was back in the start of january um i think we went 50.49 49 49 too on the last one but it was just like because we can because we're holding technique and we're not dying we're not fading away you can kind of push it a little bit more um but that's the kind of stuff that he'll do a lot more of compared to myself um and it works really well for him so um, but I have to kind of still kind of do that middle ground aerobic work, um, 15, 200s, like, like kind of RP five out of 10. Mm-hmm. Like it's always, we always kind of see it as, it's quite a grandy session. Um, but I, it works really well for me. Um, and obviously threshold as well. I was, I grew up on threshold as a kid. Um, and I respond really well to that. So I'll do that a lot more than he will. Um, but yeah, that's one of the kind of sets we'll do together. That's that. That's really fun to hear about, but it's also so interesting hearing you talk about how you don't. Most swimmers kind of have an opposite trajectory with their career, where they start, you know, doing a lot, a lot of volume as younger swimmers, and then kind of gradually come down. Yeah, but you don't always see swimmers as no. they age go back up. Yeah, right. It, I think what it was is just like it's. Um, I've always been kind of that middle ground distance freestyler 400. Um, and I was, I was, I was brought up on a lot of work when I was younger. So I'm, I know I can take the kind of workload, um, mm-hmm. and even up to kind of 21, 22, 23. So I can, I can, I do respond really well to it. So, I mean, we have this kind of thing where, especially in swimming, like the older you get, it's kind of, you start to fade away, but you look at any other sport, athletics, football, like you're in your prime from, well, soccer, you guys would say, you're in your prime from 27 to 33. And, you know, I'm doing the most meters I've ever, ever, ever done before. Sometimes we'll do 7K and I feel fine after it. I feel great. I feel fit. And it's just like that old school mentality of, you know, 27, you get a bit on now. It's a load of, it's a load of SHIT. <laughs> um, I mean, look at Nicholas Santos, even though he's a 50 freestyle, 50 butterfly, he's 42. Um, you know, Phelps and Lochte were, you know, 32, 31 in Rio. Yes, to the greatest of all time, but it is humanly possible for that to be done. Um, doesn't mean you're going to go the time they're going to go, but obviously you have to be within your limits of what you can do as an athlete. Um, but I've done the stuff I'm doing now is like back what I used to do when I used to train for the 400. So um, back when I was 19, and it clearly shows that your body can take it at 28. Um, and the, I think how old was how old was Lockte in London? Was he was he was he 28? I think he was, wasn't he? 28 and felt as 27. That sounds right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he yeah. was like, what was he, 405 on the 49 am at 28? Yeah. 
<laughs> and I was like, it's, it's, it's so you can do it. it. It really is a thing. So, um, but right now, you know, if even if I do fail and it's like I don't swim the fast times I want to go, it doesn't matter. It's I'm trying something. I'm happy and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Um, but I'm just in a good place at the minute. Uh, absolutely. I mean, that's that's just so great to hear. Uh, especially Thank you know, you. leading into a, a games, right? A games where we're yeah, at right now. I feel like Olympic year is always kind of the, you know, for us, it's the pinnacle of, any, of everything we do. Um, and that's obviously the focus Olympic year, you do everything right. And for me, it was like when I made the move to to try and switch, it was like, I don't want to look back in 10 years time and think, what if I didn't change? You know, what if I didn't change at all? Um, and like, even if I obviously now I've done and I don't swim what I want to go, it, it it's it, it's that mental release for me that, you know, I've done everything I can do to be the best I can be. And if you don't get if you don't do the times you do, then it doesn't it's, it doesn't really matter. Absolutely, yeah. And I love that mentality. And again, just congrats to you for going for it and and for taking taking the risk on yourself. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna get any slower. So that's, that's the way <laughs> I gotta look at it. Um, so let's switch gears a little bit. Obviously, yeah. the Doha World Championships are happening right now as we as we speak. The uh, two I am semis just finished. Duncan okay. Scott's uh, third, third what seat. That, what time did he go? He was 57-8. That's we good got, for him. That's, that's a good swim. Yeah, we got two Americans ahead of him. Carson was 57-1, and Shane Casas was 57-6. So Okay, fine. Should, should be a good final. That's, that's a good final. I think Duncan can win that. I think if he's if he's with them with 50 to go, I think if he's if he's got the juice on his legs, then I think he's going to get him. But it depends how fast you know, chain and Carson take it out. That's the only question you got, you got, we got to ask. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Carson has, we, we know Duncan can finish, right? He's, yeah. he's got that speed. Carson yeah. kind of has that aerobic base a little more yes, like he he, he's yeah. got a great 400 free. And then yeah, Shane, yeah. the first three fifties, he can, he, he can, can just rip them, can it. He can, he can yeah. smash it. Yeah. So should be a good race. We've got, um, Alberto Rossetti, Diaceto in that final as well. So yeah, I think that'll be a good swim tomorrow. It's so it's funny. Um, team great Britain's kind of all over the map at yeah. this meet, just in terms of everyone's plans, right? Like, yeah. uh, Tom Dean, for example, went for the relay so, so they can yeah. qualify. And now he's in Australia, I believe yeah. on, a, on a camp, That's right? Matt Richards, your training buddy is there. Yeah. He just made the Hunter free final, uh, for yeah. tomorrow night. Duncan Scott's there. PD's yeah. got on the podium and he's racing there. Um, <laughs> so what, I guess, first of all, for you, yeah. What, what was your thought process in, in opting to not come to this? Meet? It, it was never even an option for me to go at all. I, it wasn't even a question I asked Ryan because at the end of the day, the world championships originally was f for the lads to go and qualify in the four by one, go and do it and go. Um, and the, like, that's what Dave did, you know, with this kind of stuff. Dave's quite clever with Dino and Jacob. So fly in, get it done, go. And the old Dave will go back to his plan and train over in Australia. Like, I know how he works. He's he's on the ball Olympic year. Um, and, you know, with Duncan's plan, I feel like he really responds well to racing. So, like, that's what he needs to do and expose himself to that kind of level of competition. He responds really well to that. Um and I think Pete as well, he's his first team in 10 years. So we don't know what he's been doing, bless him. But um, it's nice to see him back on the world stage again with the British lads and the British team. Um, but I think everyone's in different stages of the preparation. But the way I looked at it, in my point of view and in my opinion, is that you're in February, you're supposed to be in hard work. And, you know, you're six weeks away from um, the trials, maybe seven weeks. Sorry, my fiance texted me, what do you want for tea? Um Oh, we've said pizza before. Um, so obviously middle of February, hard work. I, I didn't want to come down because if I was going to go to a world championships, which it is, you don't want to go there and you don't want to swim crap because at the end of the day, yes, it's February. It is a world championships. So that's my only thing. Like I, what, I don't want to risk that come down, rest a little bit, shave, and then go back into work again. That's what I didn't want to do. And in my mindset, I was like, you know what, there's not, what am I, what am I going to go there for and try and chase? Because I don't need to prove anything to anyone in February. 
And, you know, most of the guys who, like Kyle, Dressel, a lot of the big hitters, they're not there. Um, Because it's right in the the middle of the cycle. Um, But, like, you know, people have different plans and that's absolutely fine. But for me, I just, I never wanted to go. Um, And I think it's just like, I didn't want to lose a week and a half out of work, um, especially where we are now, what kind of work we're going into before we start tapering. So, it's really important for me to kind of keep my meter ridge up and kind of carry on the work that Ryan's prescribing um, this this time, this time of the season, really, mate, to be honest with you. Yeah. And which, again, ev- yeah, everyone's in a different place. Everyone has a different philosophy. Yeah. It's been really interesting to see what what people went to the meet and then what people didn't and then how different people yeah. are swimming at the meet. Yeah. You know, Hundred free world record <laughs> on day one. I mean, like, where's that come from? <laughs> the gate. You know? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I was like, did he turn? He turned into. He turned in twenty two two. Yeah, forty six eight. Yeah. The next morning, the two and a three. I'm turning fifty three now. I thought, what's he doing? <laughs> well, obviously, he's kind of clearly sacked it off and just going to go for the hundred again. Um, but yeah, what? I mean, what an incredible swim! And then just and hopefully see, you know, Matt race these guys. Obviously, Kyle's one of, Kyle Chalmers, one of my best friends. Um, and all go head to the head at the Olympic Games. And what's exciting is that everyone's doing something different to get to where they need to be at the Olympics. I mean, said this in that uh, uh, altitude. Me and Duncan said, like, you look at an Olympic final, you look at pretty much anyone who's in that final. Everyone's trained differently to get to that point. And it's all quite crazy, really. And we look at and look at that perspective. Everyone's doing different things in work, caught different names, um, which is really exciting. So, but yeah, I mean, what, what a great hundred three. That was that was brilliant to watch. That was really really cool. Yeah, I mean, and what a way to start start off the meet, right? Like yeah, just on day one, from, yeah, from the get day one straight in. Um, but I think from my perspective, again, it's just the main thing was for was for the British lads to go and qualify with the four by one um, for the Olympic Games because they know it's a good medal shot, and you know that for for I think for the that was the main purpose of like Dave Dean, Dave McNulty, Tom Dean, Jacob to go there do that. And then get out of there and obviously some of the guys are still racing and trying to get some exposure to high level competition so yeah yeah i no kidding and then uh for the rest of the just team great britain you know yeah. you're we're, we're again we're seeing your bud pd get on yeah. the podium race what, what do you make of his his race reps and seeing him get these practices in for the first time first worlds in five four and a half years for him since 2019, yeah, it's yeah. weird that you know I spoke to him and he was that hundred breast and he was great. I thought it was really, really good, um, a massive step forward, which is great. And he was just he was so happy about it because clearly it's working in the pool. He's happier outside the pool. He's got a good lifestyle, um, and to see him get the rewards of gradually getting back to work at his best, um, hopefully in time for which I'm sure he will be. But in the, at the end of the day, you know, I said to him before you got said. It's it's these major meets obviously you, you've missed, but just go out there and enjoy yourself, pal. Like at the end of the day, like if I retired tomorrow, you know, people will be up maybe upset for a day, then it'll be forgotten about. Um so go out there, enjoy yourself and put no pressure on yourself because you've not been on the world stage for for four years. You shouldn't have raced at the Commonwealth game, you shouldn't have done it you shouldn't have done that when you did five weeks of work. Um but it just shows like obviously he's not his his world record time fifty six nine, it's just how fast that actually is. It's just like Oh my god! Um, and like people forget how fast he's been. I'm like, you don't realize like he's twenty five now and fifty six eight or something. Like that's incredibly quick. Um, yeah. But he's different now. He's twenty nine. He's got a son. Um, and like what I realized is that like, when I look back at myself on the outside point of view, you're not the nineteen year old boy or twenty year old you used to be. Things have changed now. Your body's changed, and you've got to learn to do things differently. Um, so when you're swimming fast, you don't think about how you've done it. It feels really, really easy. And you can kind of get lost of how you did it. Um, mm. And I feel like I've, that's happened to me quite a bit. Um, but, you know, he's really, really happy. And I hope he can kind of come off this World Championships in a great place, which I'm sure he will do, and kind of get ready for trials in five or six weeks' time. Because I know he's not fully rested. Um, and I think he's had a, a couple, maybe a week and a half regeneration, a quick shave, and just kind of, I think for him, it was about getting like three rounds of 100 breast heat, semi final, just like it would be at the, at the Olympics. Because um, that's the last time you're going to get a chance to do that. Um, especially because he's not raced that kind of event for 
that back to back of heat semi final and then obviously the fifty as well for five five years well, four or five years at a high really high level. Um but yeah, he'll be fine and yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him when he gets home. I didn't even realize you guys uh had the same like breakout world championships, didn't you? In two thousand fifteen. Yeah, because yeah, he won the hundred and the fifty and I won the two and the three. Yeah. And got second in the foreigner free. Like you almost won the yeah. foreigner free. Well, I did win it because that guy shouldn't have been. <laughs> that, that guy shouldn't have been there. <laughs> I remember looking back at that, and I'm like, if I win, if I win this, I'm not going to shake his hand. And I did shake his hand. Um, but maybe one day I'll get my medals for that, and obviously the Rio medal as well. Maybe that, maybe one day. But um, it is what it is. You know, it's almost <laughs> ten years ago. But yeah, well, that should have been double gold and <clears throat> a bit more prize money. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they'll yeah, maybe they'll send you a check in the mail one day. That'd be quite nice. Please. That would be quite that'd be <laughs> lovely. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> just put it out there. I'll be waiting. Just waiting. I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting until I'm 85. Just waiting. Yeah. Um, that's that's so cool that you guys can talk like that. Um, again, because because you guys have had similar careers and and you've you've both been through the highs and the lows of kind course. of on a similar time frame. Yeah, um, I think yeah. I think for me, like looking back at my career, I really enjoyed the 2017 World Championships. I really enjoyed that meet. Uh, I know Pete did as well. Like it was just because it was so fast. Um, and it was just like the unexpected event of the 100 fly. Me and Duncan always say to each other, we mess that two and three up so much. Like in the final, we were fourth and fifth. And I remember the semi final of the two and three in 2017. I remember the last 50, I sacked it off and just stayed with Townley and thought, yep. Yeah, I'm going to win this tomorrow and just took it out way too hard. And he went out way too slow. We're like, we should have gone one and two in that. We should have beat Sun and we got one. We just didn't stick to our game plan at all. We got way too carried away. Um, <laughs> but you look back and think, you know, what you've done with each other. And it's, a, you know, it's really, really good memories. And yeah, it's uh, I've had a great career so far, but we're not done yet. Not done yet. Well, James, it's always great talking to you. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and catch oh, up. Oh, no problem. I no, no. Uh, I, I love talking to you guys. It's kind of nice to just give, give my perspective on a few things of where I'm at. And yeah, we're in a good place at the minute. And I'm just, I'm happy with what I'm doing. And yeah, I'm just uh, kind of taking each day as it comes. Yeah. Well, good luck moving forward. Uh, I hope training goes well. I hope trials go well. And, uh, and, and, you know, obviously, uh, if it c goes that far, I hope I hope Paris goes well. Yeah, I think um, I think Paris is going to be really exciting. I think if uh, for me, like that, that kind of four by two hundred is the really exciting one. Even four by one now is getting there. We've still not, as a nation, we know what we can do, but haven't done it on the world stage yet. That's the thing. Like, you know, twenty nineteen we were fourth, twenty twenty one we were disqualified, um, twenty twenty three or twenty twenty two Duncan wasn't there. 2023 we were disqualified again um it's like now come on <laughs> um but yeah no it's exciting times for british swimming ahead um obviously trials are in seven weeks um but yeah just kind of carrying on keep keep kind of taking it so as it comes keep working hard and smart and uh yeah i'm uh, looking forward to it You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.